Recently, Dutch government scientists have proposed an insane project called Northern European Enclosure Dam. The aim of the project is to dam the whole North Sea to protect 14 countries in Europe from potential rising sea levels. It sounds very bizarre and somewhat extremely hypothetical, but let's first see Netherlands' obsession in a thousand-year-old war against the ocean. This way, we can see where these Dutch scientists are coming from. On November 1530, St. Felix flood swept through the Netherlands. This massive storm created a surge that demolished the storm surge barriers, swept away the dams and destroyed the dikes killing upwards of 100,000 people and totally destroying the city of Rimswall. It was the sixth deadliest flood in human history and the worst in the European continent. Another storm hit the coastal areas of the Netherlands, Germany and Scandinavia on Christmas night of 1717. This storm, later known as Christmas Flood, was the worst flood in the history for the north of the Netherlands, killing approximately 14,000 people and entirely destroying villages in a cold winter season. The latest and biggest, the most known flood in the modern Dutch history is the North Sea Flood of 1953. This flood happened in the late January 1953 as a result of a combination of a high spring tide and a severe European windstorm over the North Sea that washed over and broke through Dutch coastal defenses. This combination of strong winds, spring tide and low pressure led to a water level of more than 5.6 meters above sea level in some areas. And the Netherlands is a country with 30% of its territory below sea level and 50% less than 1 meter above sea level. The reason why the Netherlands is so susceptible to flood is that the North Sea is shaped like a funnel. So when a storm from the north or from the northwest pushes the water southward, it cannot escape very quickly and can start to build up, significantly increasing sea levels. So in 1953, North Sea flood swept through the coasts of Netherlands and it was one of the most notorious natural disasters in modern European history. And the effect jumped through the whole northwestern Europe. There were 1,836 deaths in the Netherlands, 326 in the UK, 224 at sea and 28 in Belgium. The most damage was in the Netherlands, over 100,000 people lost their homes and belongings, tens of thousands of animals were drowned, 4,500 houses and other commercial buildings and 200 hectares of land were flooded. So as you can see, the Netherlands is renowned for floods and has an extensive flood history dating back hundreds of years with hundreds of thousands of deaths resulting from massive storm surges that decimate any land, houses and people that get in the way. Given the natural landscape, the Dutch government always tried to find solutions that would help the local population. They managed to do so by building canal systems, ditches, windmills, dams and so on. After years of Nazi occupation for recovering Netherlands, 1953 flood felt like a 9-11 of the Netherlands. Dutch people have had it enough, both from the people and from the nature, and they weren't having it anymore. That devastation prompted the Dutch to pass the Delta Act 1953, changing the structure and administration of dikes in the Netherlands, especially in the southwestern part of the country where, as we have said, water can't escape fast enough out of funnel-shaped North Sea. So this Delta Works is a giant flood control project that closed off the Rhine, Mass and Schelde estuaries with dikes linking several islands. And as an additional result, it created what amounts to several freshwater lakes that are free of tides. Four barriers and six secondary dams were built to close off the mouth and inner reaches of the broad, long interconnected inlets that for centuries had exposed the region to the destructive power of the North Sea. The plan included a revolutionary design dam called Miceland Carrying. It's the only storm surge barrier in the world with movable parts and has the ability to float. And its both gigantic gates are 240 meters long. Massive pillars span the waterways, each around 30 to 40 meters tall, weighing in upwards 18,000 tons. It automatically closes when Rotterdam is threatened by floods and it's one of the largest moving structures on the planet. New roadways and connecting bridges were built over several of the Delta Project's dams and dikes, thus ending the historical isolation of the area from the rest of the Netherlands. 
The whole project was finished in 1997 in almost 40 years, and in 2012, the total costs were set on around $13 billion, which is quite cheap and efficient considering the US spent $15.3 billion in Storm 8 after Hurricane Harvey hit Texas in 2017, and it happens almost every single year. Delta Project is mostly planned out as a defensive force against nature, but the Netherlands also goes offensive. There are other projects like Delta Works, but designed to reclaim the land from the sea. In 1986, the Netherlands proclaimed the new 12th province of Flevoland. Still, they didn't carve off the region from already existing Dutch land, nor did they annex the territory of their neighbors, like the way the Germany and the Soviet Union did with Poland. No. They built protective dikes and works, including dams, locks, leaves, and storm surge barriers off of the Zyder Zee, a large shallow inlet of the North Sea. It began to reclaim the land of the Iselmere, and then the new land led to creating of the new province of Flevoland, from what had been sea and water for centuries. This new province is three times bigger than Singapore, and Dutch people literally fooled the sea in its own game. Additionally, the risk of disastrous floods, like in the one that happened in 1953, has reduced from 100 years to 1,250. Delta and Zyder Z works have been declared as one of the seven wonders of the modern world. For the perspective, this is the Netherlands now. And this is if Dutch people didn't do anything about floods. It's an engineering miracle. So now we can see the mindset of those Dutch scientists who proposed the damming the North Sea. As climate change is accelerating, sea levels continue to rise. By the end of this century, sea levels, particularly in the Netherlands, expected to increase by 1.3 meters, which technically means 70% of its territory will be underwater. Sea level rise is caused by two factors related to global warming. The accelerating melting ice sheets and glaciers pouring water into the oceans, which rise further because of the expansion of seawater as it warms. And by 2200s, sea levels are expected to rise by 4 meters. At this level, all dams in the Netherlands will not be able to hold back any water, so Dutch scientists want to go further to build the dams enclosing the whole North Sea, and propose the project called North European Enclosure Dam. This would require the construction of two dams of unprecedented scale. The smaller of the two would be around 160 km long and block the entire western end of the English Channel between Brittany in France and Cornwall in England. The second dam would be gigantic 475 km long and would cross the top of the North Sea between Scotland, running south of the Shetland and Orkney Islands, and over to Norway. You might be asking how deep it goes in the sea. Well, between Scotland and Norway, the sea is 127 meters deep on average, although it plunges to 321 meters off the coast of Norway. Between England and France, it averages at 85 meters deep, with a maximum depth of 121 meters. Currently, the longest seawall ever constructed, which is located in South Korea, stands at 33 km long and 54 meters deep. So the technicality of this project is quite feasible as we have built oil rig fixed platforms in the middle of the oceans, in depth exceeding 500 meters. Still, dams need a little bit of different engineering approach, but theoretically it's not impossible. The project of this magnitude has its hurdles according to its size. Spanning 647 km in total, the pair of the concrete dam would require 51 billion tons of sand to build. That's the world's entire sand budget for a year. Enclosing the North Sea and Baltic Seas will have a very negative effect on the wildlife and the environment, as the tides would be disrupted. Additionally, up to 100 pumping stations required for the dam would bring in more fresh water from rivers, lowering salinity and affecting fish. The sea would even might become a freshwater lake. That will drastically change the ecosystem. Naturally, the fishing industry will suffer the most, followed by maritime trading. The English Channel is the world's busiest waterway for trade and the backbone 
backbone of the Western Europe's economical transportation as all the biggest ports are located inside the enclosed North Sea area. They can build special sleuth gates, but it will delete the trade schedules. Additionally, cement production alone emits 8% of carbon emissions globally, and construction of this giant seawall will increase carbon emissions in the process. The main factor that might spark disapproval of the public is the cost. Dutch scientists are estimating around $500 billion for the entire project, spread over 20 years. The annual cost to the 14 countries that will be protected by it would be amount to just over 0.1% of their combined GDP. For the perspective, how natural disasters involving the sea can be costly, in 2005, Hurricane Katrina in the Gulf of Mexico made $125 billion in damages, where New Orleans got one of the most devastating damages of $92 billion. And the total cost in 2017 Atlantic hurricane season was almost $300 billion. So we can see how costly and deadly it becomes when people are not prepared for predictable natural disasters. Damming the North Sea can cause a lot of problems from all ends, but doing nothing is much more costly and deadly. For instance, New Orleans is a compelling case because it has somewhat similar terrain as the Netherlands. New Orleans could have and still can adopt the same same strategy that the Netherlands did with Delta and Zyder Z works. But unfortunately, everything works a little bit different in the US than in the rest of the world. Well, thanks for watching. What do you think about this proposed idea? Leave your thoughts down in the comment section below. And please support the channel on Patreon and subscribe if you didn't. Hit the notification button not to miss upcoming episodes and hit the like button if you genuinely liked the video. If you haven't liked it, comment down below so we can discuss it.